I don't think that people realized that their product is entirely reliant on the cloud service to keep running. One of the latest buzz on the internet is that Nest is closing down one of the services on May the 15th this year. Jim Yusson blogged about this last week and we have him on a video link here from US. In the studio here in Malmö we have Gregor Wigstam. It's not anything new that companies stop selling products or delivering services. So what is special with this Jim? Uh, in this particular instance Nest purchased the company about 18 months ago and decided to quit selling uh, that company's product, which was a $300 device. Uh, what's different about this is that when Nest discontinues the service next month, the product will become useless. Gregor, what do you think about this? I don't think that people realized that their product is entirely reliant on the cloud service to keep running. I, I think that most users would assume that it would keep running with you know, whatever settings were left in it uh, when, when the service was discontinued. I think many people will be surprised when they come home on May 15 and find that you know, their, their lights don't turn on and their alarm system doesn't work and so on. Gene, what do you think is the underlying problem with this? As Gregor mentioned, the device itself is very tightly tied to the service and the natural expectation of the customer is that the device that they paid for will continue working. Uh, also there uh, is an indication that the device was actually advertised as having a lifetime subscription. Lifetime of what? Lifetime of the customer, lifetime of the service, lifetime of the device. That's always a bit tricky when you say lifetime subscription. I think an additional problem, Jane, is that we're seeing more and more uh, devices are smart devices with a cloud backend. So they're smart homes is one thing. Uh, smart toys, you know, the cognitive toys, the, it, it's like a dinosaur that you can talk to it and it, it talks to uh, Watson and, and the back end uh, or, you know, even self-driving cars, they get their traffic information, their map information, their behavioral cues, all of that from, from a cloud service. And so, so it's, um, it's a turning point going forward in society. If we're going to do all of these cool, new, smart things. Uh, people need to be able to trust them. Uh, particularly when you talk about a big ticket item like a vehicle, uh, the idea that the company that you purchased it from can shut it down without recourse uh, is a little scary for a consumer. What do you think the implications will be for Nest and in the broader schema for mobile devices? wearables and IoT products. Jean, what's your opinion here? There's really two routes that I see this going. Uh, one is that the companies uh, change their behavior to become more of a traditional product-oriented company and provide the means for those devices to continue to work as long as the device is around. The other is that they find a way to get the consumers to see the device as a much less permanent thing. Uh, but that would probably involve turning it into a subscription service as opposed to a true product. A competitor announced in the, during the weekend that they are now determined to make sure that their, ser their uh, home automation device will continue to work even if their uh, cloud service should break down. Maybe it won't be as smart as it used to be, but the, they're guaranteeing that it will continue to work. So we're going to see a change in behavior in, in the providers. But I think we'll also see a change in the consumers and, and the corporate customers. 
that they're going to be a bit more careful about who they work with. Absolutely. It's interesting that uh, that competitor is seeing this uh, stumble on the part of Nest as being an opportunity for them. I, I had a discussion on Twitter uh, yesterday with a law professor from the US uh, who was suggesting that there should be some kind of collective bargaining for um, customers. Because normally uh, you have, if you're a small customer, you go to a small company. Like if I want to have my house remodeled, I go to a company where I am important for them and they are important for me. But with the cloud, it's a, this whole logic is turned upside down. You need to go to the biggest provider because they have the best economies of scale. And then, you know, no matter how big you are, you're still going to be a tiny, tiny, tiny customer for them. So you don't have that bargaining power as an individual. And what he suggested was that to balance the equation, uh, consumers need to join forces. I, I suppose it depends on the consumer protection laws in a particular location. Um, another viewpoint might be that a larger company with a lot of customers can't really afford to have a major liability uh, if they start displeasing a lot of their customers in a way that violates the laws. But the law can't force a company to be successful and to keep providing a service. Oh, absolutely. It's a matter of uh, scale. Gene, what do you think that Nest uh, uh, should have done differently? I, th I think a company, again, that's more traditionally product-oriented would have probably foreseen uh, that this would have been a problem and would have offered either a discount or even a free replacement for the product um, and essentially eaten the cost of that in order to maintain the goodwill and avoid the bad publicity. In, or, in your opinion, it's a lot that could have been done better in this Absolutely. Uh, particularly with the uh, Internet of Things being at this early stage, uh, you don't want to introduce fear, uncertainty and doubt on the part of consumers. I, I guess that a lot of consumers are going to ask themselves that if Nest, which is owned by, by uh, Alphabet, uh, does something like this, what will everyone else do? So, Gregor, what do you think we can expect for lifetime for products in the future? I have an old camera that is eight years old. I can still buy film. Can I expect that in the future? Maybe. I'm thinking a bit like this, that uh, you will have a home for the rest of your life. And maybe you will replace the device. Maybe you will even change homes. But you probably will keep many of the same habits. So you will want your home automation solution to carry on in, in some way independent of, of the devices involved and even in, in the actual home involved. So lights should turn on at 7 when you wake up, right? Even, even if you change houses. So uh, the service, I think, will have a long lifetime and maybe the actual device that provides the service won't. We have to replace our things much often in the future, you think? If you buy a home automation service, it's a service, and if it's provided for device A or device B, what do you care? If I have a service and pay a monthly fee, then the problems will be much less than if I buy a gadget and don't have any additional fees. Yes, because once you have paid the one-off fee, you're just a cost to them. What's the upside of keeping you, really? Bad publicity? But if you are a recurring revenue for them, and it's so much harder to lose you. Jean, what do you think about this? Will it be better lifetime in the future? Well, I think uh, companies will get better at understanding uh, how to deal with these types of customers. Uh, you, know, you can have a product or you can have a service 
or you can have the best of both, but you really don't want to have people paying for a product that uh, they see as being very temporary and very likely to go away. Gregor, you are working with cloud services. Is this the same problem we have there? In the next episode of Architecture Corner, I will talk about six concrete things that you can do to make sure that this doesn't happen to you when you're using a cloud service. That sounds great. Thank you very much. Jean, thank you very much for being here on this session. Thank you. Thank you for watching this episode of Architecture Corner. See you next week. <laughs>